Hello, this is Ms. DB, and in this short video we're going to look at how to do some of the problems on Chapter 1, Section 3 assignment. So first of all, we need to review the angle addition postulate. That is when you have an angle made up of two angles hooked together, the angle R, measure of angle RQS plus the measure of angle SQP, the blue angle plus the red angle, will equal the measure of the whole angle. So if the sum of the parts equals the whole, that's basically the same as the segment addition postulate. So if we had labeled this angle 1 and angle 2, angle 1 plus angle 2 will equal measure of angle RQP. Also, if you have two congruent angles, then this ray right here, ray VW, would be the angle bisector. An angle bisector cuts an angle into two congruent parts. So in the first postulate, if you're solving a problem using this, you would say something like angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to angle blah, blah, blah. In this case, RQP. But down here, if you were trying to solve something, you would most likely say that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. So the way you set up your equation is going to be slightly different if you have congruent angles because there's an angle bisector, or if you're going to be using the angle addition postulate. All right, here's our first problems that we're going to look at in this video. We have this figure, which is going to be used for each 20, 21, 22, and 23. All right, we're given a couple things. We're given that angle EFD is 51 degrees, and we're given that angle AFB is 78 degrees. It also looks like angle AFC is a straight line, and so is DFB is a straight line. We are, for number 20, it says find the measure of angle CFB. CF, that's this one down here. If angle AFC is a straight line. Well, that means that this is 180 degrees. Straight lines are always 180 degrees. So that means that measure, we're going to use the angle addition postulate, measure of angle AFB, which we know is 78, plus the measure of angle CFB, which we don't know, that's what we're trying to find, will be equal to the whole line, which is going to be 180 degrees, but I'm going to write A, F, C. Now we're going to plug in what we know, because we know some certain parts of this. We know that A, measure of angle A, F, B is 78. We know that one is 78. So I'm going to replace this with the 78 degrees. I don't know the measure of angle C, F, B. But I do know the measure of angle AFC is 180 degrees because it's a straight line. So we're going to go over a couple of these. Yellow is hard to read, I know. So we're looking for the measure of angle CFB. And we could call that X if you don't like all those letters there. But all we have to do is subtract 78 from both sides. And we will find the measure of CFB, which is what we're looking for. So you go ahead and finish that up. Take 180 minus 78, and you'll get your answer for number 20. All right, now I'm going to erase some of these marks that I made up here because now we're looking for number 21. We're going to use some different facts. Number 21 says the measure of angle EFA we're looking for. EFA. We're looking for this angle right here. If the angle, that angle, that one that I just marked in green, is congruent to DFE. DFE is marked 51. They're saying if these are the same, what's the green angle? Well, if they're congruent, they're already telling you the answer. If they're congruent, they're the same, and they're giving you the measure of angle DFE. So you just write the same thing. All right, number 22. Now this time we are going to be looking for the measure of angle EFC. EFC. We're looking for this angle all the way from here to here. And we already know that EFD is marked 51. That's already there. And now they're also telling us the DFC, DFC, this one we don't know, but we do know that it's congruent to AFB. Where's AFB? AFB is 78. 
So if these are congruent, that means this is also 78. So now we can find, I'm going to write 22 down here. Now we can find the measure of EFC because we're going to use the angle addition postulate. The measure of angle EFC, which is what we're looking for, would be the sum of the measure, the two parts, EFD, which we know is 51, plus the measure of angle um, DFC, which we figured out was 78. So now you'll just replace this one we don't know. That's what we're looking for. But we know the measure of EFD, it's 51. We know the measure of angle DFC, it's 78. So your answer will just be those two added together. I'll let you finish that up. Okay, number 23. Number 23 says that they want us to find the measure of angle CFG. And some people answer this, well, I don't know where G is. There's no G on here. But then the rest of the problem tells us what to do. It says if FG is an angle bisector of C angle CFB. CFB is this angle down here. They're saying add an angle bisector. I'm going to use a black line, and I'm going to add a segment, or maybe it's a ray. It's hard to read this. Is it a ray? I'm going to add segment FG such that this angle will be congruent to this angle, because that's what angle bisector means. It means that it cut it into two exactly equal parts. And we want to know what CFG is. If you look back at an earlier problem, number 20, we found the measure of angle CFB in that problem. You took 180 minus 78, and you got the measure of angle CFB. So if you take that answer for 23, oh, here, I was going to write it up here. Take your answer from number 20, whatever you got, measure of angle CFB, and you divide it by 2, because angle bisector means you have two exactly congruent parts, then you'll have your answer for number 23. CF, angle CFG is half of whatever you got for number 20.